The defence of this country has constituted a serious problem ever since the introduction of aerial warfare. The difficulties of the problem have been greatly accentuated by the introduction of weapons of mass destruction and heavily armed bombers, typified by the B-29, capable of carrying vast loads over great distances. In this film, we're going to discuss fighter tactics against the B-29. Now, we have two devices to help you over this. They are models and 16 millimeter projection. Now, the basis on which this film has been evolved is by actual trials made by the Central Fighter Establishment in conjunction with the 3rd Air Division of the United States Air Force. The material is therefore real and not based on any haphazard ideas or personal or individual approach. Well, first of all, we will deal with this problem from the point of view of the B-29. Lights. The aircraft has a crew of 11. The aircraft commander, first pilot, bombardier, navigator, radio operator, engineer, and five gunners. The B-29 armament consists of 12 50 caliber machine guns with an optional 20 millimeter cannon for the tail mount. Rate of fire for the 50 caliber machine gun is 700 rounds a minute. Total load of ammunition is 12,000 rounds or 1,000 rounds per gun. All guns with the exception of the tail mount are mounted in remotely controlled turrets. Now this picture shows the disposition of the guns and turrets which is as follows. Four guns upper forward turret, 360 degrees azimuth, minus three to plus 90 degrees elevation. Two guns lower forward turret, 360 degrees azimuth, plus three to minus 90 degrees elevation. Two guns upper aft turret, 360 degrees azimuth, naught to plus 90 degrees elevation. Two guns lower aft turret, 360 degrees azimuth, plus five to minus 90 degrees elevation. Two guns tail mount, optional mount for 20 millimeter cannon, 30 degrees left and right in azimuth, plus 30 to minus 30 degrees elevation. Control turrets may be used singly for the single bomber defense or in combinations of two or more for formation defense. Turrets may be operated by any of four sighting stations which are located in the nose, the top of the fuselage amidships, right waist blister and left waist blister. Each sighting station may control one or more turrets at any time depending upon the tactical situation. All sighting stations are equipped with computer sights accurate from 200 yards to 1500 yards. Total firepower of the B-29 is 8,400 rounds per minute. First we will deal with tactical use of the remote control turret system for bomber defense. The B-29 has 36 gunner turret combinations which permit any one gunner at a sighting station to bring the maximum firepower to bear on an attack within his arc of fire. This arrangement enables a single B-29 to give a good account of itself under almost any type of attack. The specifications of the B-29 are as follows. Wingspan, 141 feet. Height of tail, 30 feet above ground. Diameter of fuselage, 9 feet 6 inches. Length of fuselage, 99 feet.
maximum true airspeed at 30,000 feet is 360 knots and the range is 3,400 nautical air miles carrying 20,000 pounds of bombs. Of course, the range will vary with altitude and bomb load. It can cover 4,700 nautical air miles with 9,000 gallons of fuel. The bombing altitude is 30,000 feet and the average fuel consumption is 410 gallons per hour for long-range flights. Having shown you the performance and the details of the B-29, we will now pass on to the fighter attacks. But before doing so, it is important that we study the formations these bombers normally fly. A group formation consists of three such squadrons flying in echelon, stacked for mutual protection. Numbers two and three squadrons will be stacked above and behind the lead squadron. Whereas the elements of three aircraft in each squadron will be stepped above and below the squadron lead aircraft. The respective elements of the group are stepped down, away from the sun. This defensive combat formation has been mathematically designed to uncover the maximum number of guns to bear on any area of attack. A squadron formation of B-29s can concentrate a pattern of fire from 100 to 120 guns in any area of attack with devastating effect. I'm going to give you a brief summary of the results obtained and the conclusions arrived at after the recent trials in which the Meteor 4 and the Vampire aircraft were used. These trials were based on various types of attack recommended by United States Air Force officers who had carried out similar trials in the United States. Remember, in all these cases we are dealing with bombers flying at a height of between 30,000 and 35,000 feet. The first four forms of attack that I'm going to show you were not satisfactory at that altitude for reasons which I shall discuss. It is possible that the strategy might be useful at a lower altitude in regard to the first two forms. Now I'm going to demonstrate positioning by means of these models. This is from a stern and above. Now this is not recommended because of the initial difficulty of positioning your fighter for the attack and at the same time maintaining your curve of pursuit during the subsequent dive. In this form of attack it is difficult not to exceed your mark number limitation and the use of dive brakes makes sighting difficult. Now the second of these attacks is from a stern and below. In this form of attack, the Vampire 3 was found to be unsuitable due to its poor rate of climb and zoom climb. The Meteor 4 gave good results at angles off below 30 degrees. In the attack that I have just demonstrated, the fighter stands a reasonable chance of shooting the bomber down, but the B-29 will record equally positive results on the fighter. This particular form of attack might be of use at night under moonlight conditions. I must stress, however, that in both these cases, diving from astern and above, and from astern and below, the bomber can open fire effectively before the fighter can bring its guns to bear on the target. Now for the full beam attack. In this case, the fighter positions itself 3,000 yards out and well ahead of the bomber, and about 1,000 feet above. From this position, it carries out a full beam attack. It was found, however, that this attack was not possible with our present sight and armament and resulted in a fly-through. The small bullet density achieved was considered insufficient to make this attack effective and is not, therefore, recommended. The fourth type of attack I want to demonstrate to you is the frontal beam attack. In this case, the fighter positions himself five miles ahead, 
3,000 yards out on a parallel course. He turns toward the B-29. Tracking is started at 1 o'clock at a range of 2,000 yards. He opens fire at 1,200 yards at 2 o'clock and continues until 4 o'clock at 700 yards. The fixed gun sight had to be used with a deflection of between 4.5 and, and 5 radii. We found that the Meteor 4 was unsuitable for this form of attack due to its inability to track the B-29 below 1,000 yards. The Vampire, with its better maneuverability, could track the B-29 down to 700 yards. It was also found that the fighter presented a very difficult target to the bomber. This attack, however, was found to be very difficult for the pilot to execute without considerable practice. For these reasons, this attack is not recommended. I am now going to demonstrate to you the two recommended forms of attack, after which I shall show you a film covering the actions in full. Now, the first of these recommended attacks is the high quarter, now, in the high quarter attack, the fighter's position is 3,000 feet above and 3,000 yards to one side of the target, flying on a parallel course. It should aim to commence its attack from a position slightly ahead of the target and traveling at approximately the same speed. From this point, it turns through 90 degrees towards the target, which should then appear approximately dead ahead of the fighter. At this stage, Opposite bank is applied and the curve of pursuit is established. Tracking with the center dot of the GGS should be commenced as soon as possible and ranging as soon as the optimum sighting range is reached. Under these conditions of attack and at the height of 30,000 feet, the fighter can commence shooting at 800 yards range at angles off of approximately 30 degrees. At 600 yards, which is the optimum range of the present armament, the angle off will have been reduced to the neighborhood of 20 degrees, and thereafter the range and angle off are reduced until the line astern position is reached at approximately 200 yards. It is, however, desirable to break off the attack before the astern position is reached, and preferably before the fighter enters the 10 degree cone of fire immediately astern of the bomber. Apart from the accurate and lethal return fire which the fighter is likely to encounter within this cone once he has entered it, he is committed to a breakaway throughout which he is presenting a relatively slow target to the guns of perhaps the entire bomber formation. By breaking off the attack before entering the 10 degree cone, the fighter can exploit his speed by baking diagonally across and just below the bomber or formations of bombers, thus presenting them with a difficult deflection shot. The other form of attack we recommend is the head-on. This has been tried out with meteors and vampires, and after several trials, the following method was found to produce the best results. The fighter achieves a position 12 miles ahead, two miles out, and a thousand feet above the bomber by the use of GCI or visually. It then turns onto the bomber's reciprocal track. The fighter then maneuvers into a position as near dead ahead of the bomber as possible, opening fire at about 1500 yards down to approximately 600 yards. The breakaway is effected above the bomber at a safe range bearing in mind that the closing speed is in the region of 750 knots. On these attacks, the angle off should be as small as possible, below 5 degrees, to achieve the best results. The head-on will give you the best chance of complete tactical surprise, and with practice should offer you very good results against the B-29 and is recommended. Head-on attacks can be coordinated with high-quarter attacks. Now this may be an effective method of breaking up large formations of bombers. Once this has been done, individual attacks should be able to deal with them. Well, I've done my best to demonstrate with models the various types of attacks. And I'm going to show you a film of aircraft actually carrying out the last two. Lights.
four is fitted with two Derwent 5 gas turbine engines. The cockpit is pressurized and the aircraft has an operational ceiling of 40,000 feet. At normal takeoff weight, the aircraft has a wing loading of 42 pounds per square foot. At sea level, the Meteor 4 has a maximum speed of just over 500 knots and at 40,000 feet, 450 knots. With a 180 gallon long range drop tank fitted, the maximum speed at 40,000 feet is 440 knots. But at a low level, the aircraft has a limitation of 430 knots. The Meteor is equipped with four 20 millimeter guns capable of firing 620 rounds per minute each and with ammunition for approximately 15 seconds fire. A gyro gun sight is fitted. The Vampire has a similar operational ceiling to the Meteor 4. The wing loading at normal takeoff weight is 40 pounds per square foot. Its top speed at sea level is 435 knots and at 40,000 feet, 430 knots. Its armament and gun sight are similar to those of the Meteor 4. combat films were taken at altitudes between 10,000 feet and 20,000 feet, but initial trials were carried out between 30,000 and 35,000 feet. It will therefore be appreciated that during the high quarter attacks, greater angles off within range can be obtained at these lower altitudes. In formation head-on attacks, when the B-29s are flying on a broad front, the fighters should turn in in line astern and on the run-in form into loose echelon, port or stop. If the B-29s are flying on a narrow front, the fighters turn in in line astern and carry out the attack individually about 1,500 yards apart. It must be remembered that in all cases, the fighters break away above the bombers. In the coordinated quarter attacks, the fighters position themselves in pairs either side of the bombers and attack from alternative sides in rapid succession. The sections, after breaking away, form up on the opposite side to their previous position. The number two in a section should position himself outside and slightly ahead of his leader, flying about 50 feet above. He should turn in at approximately the same time as his leader and execute a similar attack, keeping approximately 800 yards behind.